Hello again, Tube of Views. So, as you can see here, we have got the wheel off and we are ready to start putting ball joints in this thing. Get rid of that squeaking so it's a little easier to sell, or at least a little less annoying to drive. Uh, so, I guess, without further ado, let's get started. Hello again, Tube of Views. So, as you can see here, we have got the wheel off and we are ready to start putting ball joints in this thing. Get rid of that squeaking so it's a little easier to sell, or at least a little less annoying to drive. Uh, so, I guess, without further ado, let's get started. So, I think I've got all of the stuff that I need to get this, uh, to get these ball joints off. First thing I'm going to do is unbolt the uh, unbolt the CV axle from the spindle. Get the nut off. We're just going to take our hammer and not give it a hard whack, but we're going to give it a whack. Okay, so you can see the splines are free from the uh, from the spindle there. Um, next, up, we've got to take the brake caliper off. Um, I'm going to take the caliper. I am going to take the caliper and the bracket off because then it can just stay as one piece. And this is being stubborn here. Uh, at any rate. Uh, it can be as one piece, and then... Whew! It's on there. And uh, stay together. There. There. It's just these two bolts. Uh, and I'm going to need a 15 millimeter open-end box in. Since that first one was a little bit tough, we'll assume that this one's going to be as well, and we're going to double wrench it. Ugh. Oh, you know what? I just realized I took the wrong bolt out. There's two bolts right next to each other here. And uh, so there's three bolts actually that hold the uh, wheel bearing on and two bolts that hold the brake caliper on. And I undid one of the ones that holds the wheel bearing on. Okay, so now we'll take the other brake caliper bolt out. And then we'll bring this up. Like so. And we're zip tied and supported. There. So, hope that look is right there. And slide your rotor right off of there then we can start uh, undoing the ball joints so we're going to do the upper one first this is a well they're all stud style mounts i guess but this one in particular has the bolt that goes through the stud Back up on that. And 
and then we can actually pop this bolt right out. Use my hammer here. And you can see there was already a little bit of separation in that ball joint. So now with that done, we uh, should be able to pull this back far enough. Ooh, gotta watch that uh, wheel speed sensor cable uh, just a little more. Yeah, I don't want to have to undo that, but I guess if I do. I gotta do it. But at any rate, there we go there. So now we can undo this bottom one. And this one I've got to take a cotter cotter key out, undo a bolt, and then we will uh, get the pickle forks in there and rattle it loose. You can see though that the rubber on this upper one is all torn and you'll actually see the bottom one is very much the same way, so when any uh, pressure is applied to it and it moves, then it will squeak. So, let's keep moving. So, as you can see, we got the uh, we got the uh, ball joint, the bolt on the bottom ball joint undone. So now the next step is to break that ball joint free from the spindle. Now the way a ball joint looks, it's tapered, and it goes into a seat that is also tapered to uh, the same degree, so that when it goes in there, it seats and it sets and it's firm. Um, so there's no, no play up and down, except in the case of this ball joint up here where it's got a groove so that it sets in there, bolt drives through, holds this ball joint from going up and down. So what we're gonna do here, we'll take our handy dandy pickle fork. Um, I do have a set for an air hammer but my air compressor is incredibly noisy and I hate running it any more than I have to. So we're just going to use the old manual set. Drive it in there, drop the, uh, drop the spindle down. We're actually going to spin that around just a little bit so it kind of sets. And you know what? I'm just going to have to undo this wheel speed sensor cord before I tear it. I'm actually doing that just all wrong. I'm sure somebody will call me out on that, but you are welcome to do so because I know I'm doing it wrong. And now I have corrected myself and I'm doing it right. So moving on. Now time to get the ball joints out. So on this upper ball joint, um, it's they're actually a part of the upper control arm. In some cases, you can actually press these out of here and replace them just as the ball joint. Usually what I recommend though, because rubbers over time get worn and squeak uh, as well as the ball joints. Uh, what I usually recommend and what we're gonna do here is just replace this upper control arm. Now I will point out that there is camera, uh, Yes, camber plates up here 
that when they're out of adjustment will make your alignment out of adjustments. You need to make sure that you mark those and after you've replaced the upper control arm, it is advisable at the very least to, uh, to get it aligned to make sure that you're all straight and square because anytime you've got this off, you take risk of changing the upper orientation of the, uh, of the wheel, which is gonna change your camber. So, but long and short, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna make a mark on this plate. We're just gonna reference from there to there because this plate is what moves that in or out. And then we'll go over here and we'll do the same. And then we will remove these two top bolts there and there, pull the control arm out, put the new control arm in, set the plates back to where they were, and then move on to the bottom ball joint. So nothing too terribly exciting here, just two bolts. And uh, let's get on with it. Okay, so you guys can see I've got the uh, new upper control arm all bolted in and ready to go. Um, just like we said, you know, put the camera plates back in, mark, and everything is set right there. So now all we got left to do is to remove this lower ball joint. And so first thing we're going to do is we want to make sure that we choose a cup for the ball joint tool that is actually going to fit around the outside of this ball joint. So looks like this is gonna be the fit. So we want it to be able to slide through there because we're gonna put that down here and then we'll press using the uh, top of the ball joint. And actually that feels like it's a curved surface, which I didn't remember that being this way on these explore. No, 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 I'm wrong. Um, so, actually going to use this one because, as you can see, it's got a cutout and the edge of the ball joint, this edge, is so close to the front here that there's no room to press um, or to get the, uh, the tool up in there. So, we will uh, grab the ball joint press. which looks just about like this. Go ahead and screw the, screw the jack in here. And then we take this one right here, which we use this because this stud, as it comes down, can go into there and allow that to press out. And we'll put it just like so. And then we're going to place it Place this all like so, like this, and then we'll put it there and then press that ball joint out. And I forgot a critical step, which was taking out this snap ring. The snap ring is also going to tell you which direction this ball joint needs to go. Uh, wouldn't be a bad idea at this point in time to just spray a touch of PB Blaster just around the base of that ball joint, just to help free it up a little. Um, because I'm sure somebody is going to call me out on it, I will admit that I missed a step. I wouldn't call it a critical step, but a step that I should have taken nonetheless uh, when replacing uh, the CB shafts getting in the way now when replacing that upper control arm, and that is that I should have left those upper bolts loose um, because it will actually uh, bind up those rubbers, and so when you put it all together, when you put that all together, um, you want to tighten those up after you get the spindle on, but I didn't do that, so Wayne deserves a spanking. So now we're going to contend with this dang CV shaft, and I suppose if I really wanted to make this easy, what I would do is probably just undo this shock mount so I could set the shock to the side and then the CV shaft to go a little bit further over. But I think we'll be able to make this work this way, so we're about to find out.
Here goes nothing. Sometimes you'll have these where they're a little difficult to get out, so just want to put a little vibration. There we go. Now it popped. There it pops again. I think, yep, we are all the way out. And you can see that we now have the old ball joint, which you can also see was very dry and the rubber was gone, and was probably the biggest reason this was squeaking out of there. So now, we're going to take this new ball joint, we're going to install this just a little bit differently. Um, I'll take my rag, though, and wipe that board. You've got to be a little bit careful when you're pressing these in. You want to make sure you go in nice and straight, otherwise you can, uh, you can make a mess for yourself. <clears throat> But we want to <clears throat> find a collar that will actually fit around the base of this ball joint here because what we're going to do now is we're going to press this up instead of having to press through, pressing up into the lower control arm. <clears throat> so this is the piece right here that we need. Then we'll use this piece and then we have to find a cup that will fit over the top of this. Now, probably not the right way to do it, or maybe it is, I don't know, but let's see here. Go just like this, and as you can see, this cup here fits nicely over the top of that ball joint. I'm going to start this ball joint up in here just a little bit. And get the ball joint press set up. I want to set this cup on top. I've got a much nicer set ball joint press set than this at the shop. It's actually a snap-on set and it's absolutely awesome. Um, but Obviously, we are not there. Uh, some of the problems with these cheaper ball joint press sets is that they uh, they tend to bend, and then you get some deflection, and it just doesn't work out real well. It pushes the ball joint to the side. So you got to be a little bit careful with these because these these cheaper ball joint press sets they'll actually bend that part. But we will uh, see if that's going to be the case here. Yeah, we are actually pushing that ball joint just a little cattywankas. Um, try. Um, you know, we got to try to get that straightened out because, like I said, I'm going into that bore. Oh, a little cockeyed. And some of it is fighting with that CV shaft, which I should probably just pop out of the way. Some of it is fighting with the cheaper ball bearing press, but here we go.
there we are. Now oh, we're actually coming up. I just uh, was bottoming out against this piece. So we can, looks like it's in there and we can uh, finish pushing this up and then life should be good. Feels like we are TD, and we are. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, so now we take and uh, put the tools away first. the new snap ring in place. Like so. And uh, yeah, just start putting everything back together. Um, and uh, installation, of course, is absolutely just the opposite of uh, removal, which makes this all really easy. We'll put the spindle back up, bolt it up to here, tighten this bolt up uh, so it sets on that uh, ball joint, put the CV shaft in while we're doing that, bolt on the brake caliper and bracket, and we should have a, uh, a squeak-free Explorer. Well, we got her all back together, tires back on, and I thought it was just this side, and I'll show you exactly why I typically speaking Replace ball joints as sets both sides because the squeak is much better But there is still a squeak and if we come right over here and shake this side It is definitely coming from the passenger side as well, so Unfortunately, I will have to replace yet another set of ball joints on this, but that's a project for another day um, the other thing that I've got to do here, hopefully show you guys a little bit of information, is uh, as you can see, door does not open from the outside. So we will uh, address that in another video. Until then, I hope this has been helpful. Somebody finds some use out of this nonsense that I do. Um, and yeah, so rate, comment, subscribe, and do all of the YouTubery things that you guys have been doing thus far.